All right, let's look at this problem. We have a rigid insulated tank. It's initially evacuated. It's connected uh, through a valve to a supply line that is carrying steam at 1 MPa and 300 degrees Celsius. And the valve is open, so then that, that supply line supplies steam into our tank that originally had nothing in there. So now the valve is open. Steam is allowed to flow slowly into the tank until the pressure into the tank reaches 1 MPa, at which point the tank then the the valve is closed, so then you know our process is over. Determine the final temperature of steam in the tank. Okay, so do you see that this is an unsteady flow process? Because initially it, it has nothing, um, but then a supply it is supplied, steam comes into it. Um, the steam that was is coming into it is at one MPA and 300 degrees C, but once it get, goes into the tank, then it keeps on going into the tank until the tank reaches one MPA and so then now we do have steam into it. So it's kind of collecting mass of steam. So this is an unsteady flow process. Uh, all right, so maybe let's go ahead and, and write our kind of big equation, our conservation of energy equation for an unsteady flow process. Any Q, right, any heat transfer, plus any work that's crossing a boundary, plus any M in H in minus M out H out equals M2, all right, should I put U here or should I put H here? Right, I'm going to put U minus M1, U1. Well, this might be H. This might be H. I just put U just real quick just to start. So first of all, should this be U or should this be H? Uh, well, it is a rigid tank. It's a rigid tank. So, so yes, it, it should be U right there. All right, so now do I have all of these terms and I'll plug in everything that I can for these terms a rigid insulated tank an insulated tank means no heat transfer all right insulated tank means no heat transfer uh, and there's no work crossing the boundary right there's no paddle wheel no um, work in this problem that is initially evacuated. Initially, there's nothing in there. There's no mass in there. Initially, what does that tell me? This term right here is zero. All right, it's connected through a valve to a supply line that carries steam at one MPa at 300 degrees C. So um, this steam coming, that is the steam coming in, right? That is the steam at 1 MPa, uh, 300 degrees C. You know, if they tell me it's steam and it's 1 MPa and 300 degrees C, I bet I could find any other value that I wanted, including the H. You know, I bet I could find the H of that steam that's coming in from that supply line. Is there any uh, steam going out? Uh, no, no, there was no outlet. There's only an inlet, so so that that becomes um, zero. So our equation really boils down to m n m n times the h n equals the m final times the u final, right? M final times U final. All right, so my conservation of energy equation boils down to that equation right there. Uh, what about my conservation of mass equation? Don't don't forget about your conservation of mass equation. We we didn't worry about conservation of mass in chapter four in closed systems. We didn't have our conservation of mass equation, but in chapter five, for steady flow and unsteady flow, we do have conservation of mass. So our conservation of mass would be m in minus m out equals m2 minus m1, right? The m in minus m out equals m final minus m initial. There is no m out. There is no m1. My m in equals my m2. m in equals my m2. So combining this equation with that equation, then these are not zero, sorry, they're not zero, but they are equal to each other. And so I can divide them out of both sides of the equation. So I get H 
n equals u final. All, all of that just to get that the enthalpy of the fluid going in from the supply line equals the internal energy u of the final fluid. Okay, do I know this h in? I haven't found it yet, but I, I, I think I can find it. So, so for the inlet, for the inlet, uh, we know it's steam. We know it is 1 MPa. We know that it is 300 degrees C. So go to our property tables. All right. If it's steam, right, go to our property tables. Um, if this was a hydrogen or air or something like that, we, we might could do like PV equals uh, MRT, right, ideal gas equations. Or we do have some tables for ideal gases. Anyway, so I'm going to property tables. I'm going to start at table A. Let's see, which we start. I like to start at table A5. All right, property tables. Start at table A5 for a temperature of 300 degrees. Uh, sorry. Yeah, let's start at table A5 for a pressure. Yeah, let me look at this real quick. For a pressure of 1 MPa, which would be 1,000 kPa, uh, my T-sat is 179. I'm at a, I'm at a T of 300. It, this is superheated. You probably already knew. And it t told you steam right? instead of a mixture. Uh, but I like to start there, and it tells me it's superheated. So now that I know it is superheated, a pressure of 1 MPa right here. pressure of 1 MPa and a temperature of 300 my H 3051.6 3051.6 kilojoules per kilogram kilojoules per kilogram so let's go back to our notes H of the inlet is 3051.6 kilojoules per kilogram and I'm going to take that final, right? Well, I don't exactly know it's steam, right? It could have pressurized to uh, a mixture or something, but I know it, it is water. Uh, and so I, if I know the final pressure is 1 MPa, and I know that the U now is 3051.6 kilojoules per kilogram, then take that and find the temperature, right? So P2, U2. If I know two things, I can find the other thing from the property tables. So let's see. I don't have the math here. Let's see if we can uh, do this. Um, I might start with, with table A5 to see if that U lies in between UF and UG. So let me go back to table. You probably know it's, it's probably superheated, right? Uh, but if we went to table A5, a pressure of 1 MPa, uh, then my U, G is between 761 and 2582, so I was at 3000. So yeah, it's too high, it's superheated. So here, I am at a... Pressure of 1 MPa and a U of 3051, where would that be? Yeah, right in between here. So I would need to interpolate between those two values, between 400 and 500, interpolate. Yeah, because that's, that's what I've got. Try that interpolation. I've got a temperature, T2 of 456.1 degrees Celsius. 456. 0.1 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we we notice it was an unsteady flow process because it started with no mass and it ended with a lot of mass, right? That's an unsteady flow process. So I wrote out that long equation, but if there's no heat transfer Q, then that drops out. There's no work crossing boundary that drops out. There was no outlet that drops out. There was no uh, initial conditions. So it really boiled down to a pretty easy equation, but I didn't know how much mass. It didn't tell me the volume of the tank. It didn't tell me how much mass came into it. 
So I went to my conservation of mass equation and saw that, oh yeah, and, and it makes sense, doesn't it? The, the mass that went through the inlet is now all of the final mass in the system. So I could take that back to my conservation of energy equation to, to show that those can be divided out of the equation mathematically. Both sides divide them out of the equation. And so I've got un equals, uh, hn equals u final to let me solve for the um, final temperature right there. Okay.